Folks, we got a long way to go. We're going to take this out a little bit right here too because I don't want to have to be folding these over real hard, the wires right here. So we'll keep going. Getting pretty close. I'll get that finished up and show you how it looks in a minute. Okay, here's what we got. I think we're in pretty good shape. It was like this boat was made for this because there is just exactly enough room for this battery to fit in here. So I'm stuck with this, or at least these dimensions width-wise. I uh, show you first. I honked this out a little bit up here to help the battery as it angles in. Took this down a little bit. I, I like this shape. I think that's cool looking, you know, so I, I didn't buzz that down all the way. Cool is important. goes in just like that and I mean it just fits like that uh, we do need to add a water outlet you probably noticed that already but we're gonna put it just behind this one so we'll have this groovy looking little parallel set of uh, water lines as they come out right there it is gonna get a little bit messy in here one of the things you guys forgot to tell me, and I'm a little bit disappointed in you because I was putting all this together and I thought, wow, how cool is this? Mmm. You may or may not recall that uh, my steering servo formerly sat right here, which means my steering shaft ran right here. Not going to be a lot of fun trying to get that battery out of there now. Uh, we're going to change that. Servo goes to the rear now. I don't know if you can see this in the camera shot. Just behind this battery opening is where the servo will mount. It's kind of cool. It'll give me a really, really short little steering shaft, which is just so much more rigid. So that'll be kind of nice. I hated to move the weight rearward, um, but I think that with the large batteries we have up here now, we're going to be just fine. We're still going to be able to maintain... Where's my parts? My receiver position is going to be right up here. That's a little further forward than I think I showed you before. And the uh, battery for it will land here. So I'm still going to be able to run my antenna wire up and out over here. Because I do want it exposed because I'm a chicken. But I think that's all going to fit really nice now. It's a little bit of a challenge in the wire and that it won't quite reach now. So I'm putting an extension in. And I don't want that draping across here where I'm going to have to deal with it, taking batteries in and out. So you may or may not be able to see it. I've added a hole right here. This is where the old switch used to be when I used switches. And I just enlarged that hole so the end of the extension can come out and connect here and then connect back here. I hate using extensions, I really do. I just, I like wires to be as short as humanly possible. I just can't come up with another solution for this. I don't want to move battery and receiver to the rear. I think then it's still going to be in the way also if I positioned it back here somewhere. I just need all of this free access area here to get batteries in and out quickly. Things happen at RC Unlimited races. Uh, you are moving quick. And most of us now, we're running gas boats and we're running nitro boats and we're running electric boats and so you've always got a, a heat coming up. So we need to be able to move quickly and I just want it to be nice and efficient and I think we're there. So next move, we're going to do some carving on this side and create whatever mount arrangement we're going to use mount the speed control to the wall here. It may be as simple as, and gosh, I don't like doing this kind of stuff, but you know what? I love simplicity and lightweight, so I may do the Velcro thing against this wall, and I'm thinking a zip tie around it as a little bit of insurance and just to pull it up nice and snug. But the wires and so on and capacitors kind of interfere with this little uh, struck piece of structure right here. So we're just going to carve that out. I don't think that needs to be there. So, so I shouldn't have put it in, right? Actually, I thought it looked cool. Mmm, what a dummy. 
anyway, that's what we're doing next. Maybe I'll show you some video of that and then how we're going to add our tube over here. So we're going to keep going. All right, here we go. Trying to give it a little style. Here's the point to what we're doing here. Uh, we've moved our steering servo rearward so it isn't in the way of the batteries getting in and out. I think we've already talked about that. And we're going to put a mount in here. Not this one. This is a throwaway. I just happened upon the other day, but I thought, boy, that's perfect to uh, kind of show you what we're doing. The reason I say this isn't the one we're going to use because it's not enough. I don't just want to put this up here and have my servo kind of dangling. I want a full top to bottom piece that I'm going to put on this end. The forward point, the mounting screws are going to go right into this rib right here. But we're going to want, I need a wider slot on the bottom than I do on the top where the servo is actually going to sit. The reason for that is because the wire in this raised area right here gets in the way. If all you do is cut a hole, obviously we can't install the servo. I could cut it out bigger, but then the wood gets very close to the edges where these the mounting screws need to go, so we don't want to do that. So we're going to have a long slot, a tall slot I should say, that's longer near the bottom so the servo fits in and then slides up into place. Okay. And so that's taking place right here. We're going to install it here, slide it up into place, and put the screws in. I don't think I've gone quite far enough down. Uh, there's reasons it's going up instead of down. You might be saying, we'll put it down on the floor. Uh, I don't remember if it's in this video or a different video, but uh, I have mounted the servo against the floor in times past. The trouble is that traps moisture. In a nitro or gas boat, it also traps gas or nitro and oils down underneath it and eats up the wood. That's no good. So I don't want to be flat against the floor, so I could come up a little bit, and that'd be fine. But part of what we're dealing with here is the steering shaft. And where it will go through. If I have the servo down low, I don't know if this will... If you'll be able to tell from where the angle of the camera is right now. If the servo is down low... Can you see the angle of that shaft as it's up high here and angles down? I don't like that. It would probably work just fine. I just like it to be parallel to the bottom. I, I just, it's just me. I just like things to look right. And in my mind, having it, uh, can you kind of tell? Down low like that gives it this nice parallel to the floor look. And gives me a nice 90 degree angle here where this mounts. Okay, I don't want to be coming down at an angle because I don't have my 90. Okay, I don't know if that makes any sense to you. So if we go up high, my servo winds up. See how pretty that is? Again, I don't know if you can tell from there, but it's just a really pretty, uh, nice in-line look. We're going out on this rib here. You certainly won't be able to tell in that video. But again, it's all because I like stuff to look right. I, I want the shaft to be parallel to the lines of the, uh, the opening here in the hull. And it is if it's up here. If I mounted it back further, then the shaft angles outward don't like that that hurts me so right there and then it'll look like we always designed it that way okay so that's what we're doing let me show you some stuff some of my favorite cutters and some of my least favorite cutters i got right here say you're working with something like this and uh we need to just make a hole all right you've got solid material and you need to make a hole how are you going to do it you don't have room to get your drill in here, right? So you're going to use this. You're going to use your angled cutter. And common way to go. I gave away the, uh, the prize showing you that one. 
This is a pretty typical burr. Very gnarly, right? You're gonna move material fast with this baby. That's what I wanna do if I'm cutting a big hole. So you'd put this in. First of all, you need one of these 90s. If you don't have one, get one. This is just to hold, hold the shaft in place while you lock it down, okay? And we're good to go, right? We're gonna cut a hole. This is scary. If you've ever tried this, you've seen this happen. So I'm working my way through. Whoa. She got stuck. So what I'm gonna do instead, right, is I'm gonna push it over towards the side of the hole and try to get it worked around. What if I wanna cut a really nice hole, by the way? I'm trying to do a really precise job here. Okay, now I kind of got it. I kind of did okay, but it ain't nowhere near around. It'll chatter. These big things here, yeah, it'll move stuff, but gosh, it chatters and makes it crazy. If you want to cut neat holes, here, I'm going to show you one of my favorite, probably my favorite. Boy, that got stuck with all that chattering. There we go. This guy here. Can you see that? It's just got a bunch of nubbins on it. I forget, I think they call it diamond, but that can't be diamond. Come on. You can call anything you want a diamond, right? Polish up a turd and call it a diamond. This guy here moves material not quite as fast, but boy, it does a neat job. Might chatter a little. Nothing like one of them big burly ones. This does really nice, friendly work. Doesn't blow your material all up. It's a great little dude. Really nice for drilling little holes and things. We used that uh, here a few minutes ago. You didn't see it, so we didn't use it. I used it a few minutes ago. It's probably forward of the camera shot, but we're adding a water outlet. This is another piece of that uh, uh, 0.165 diameter, outside diameter, hypodermic needle. Tubing, hypodermic needle, look at it. How'd you like to use that? Uh, come on, baby. <laughs> I can take it. <laughs> uh, you'll see why it's got this cool little sausage cut. Maybe I can show you here. It, it goes through the hole further forward, of course, but this sausage cut here will line up perfectly with the exterior of the hull. So it has just a really cool look on the outside, right? And the water line hits it. It's up underneath the hull about like, yay, further forward. I'll show you that at some point. So that's how we're gonna do that. Another cool way to move uh, material fast, by the way. They call this a diamond wheel. I'm sure they're lying. What it means is a wheel that's got rough stuff on it. Um, this is a quick disconnect. A cool little Dremel thing. Little quarter turn jobber. Put it in there, quarter turn, locks in. This, this dude here, you need to cut the back off, hook this up, pow, I mean, it flies through. Uh, let me show you. It runs through material quick. These are useless, by the way. A little sanding flapper. Don't waste your money. This is pretty typical. You know, a little thin cut, also on a quick disconnect thing. A whole lot slower when you got a long ways to go in wood. This one, this is pretty well worn out, by the way. I've used it a lot, so don't expect great things. All right, we took our sponsor and clean off of there. It wasn't no good anyhow. <laughs> Put a new one on. Don't be afraid. Get that baby out and hack stuff. Make it better. All right, what else are we doing? We're going to do a little bit. I don't know if you can see it in the shot. We're going to do a little bit of sanding back here in the opening where the uh, pipe used to exit. We're going to sand that all up until we get nice bare wood. And I'm just going to put tape on the back, tip it up on the end, fill that full of epoxy. We're just going to plug it. I know that's a little bit heavy, but it'll be all right. We're going to do the same thing with the old uh, pipe mount here. We used to have a little rubber dealy sitting there at the pipe, rear of the pipe mounted on. And uh, so that's what we're working on right now. I'm going to carve a little bit more here, get my servo fitting up in there good. And I'm going to build a, you know, cut a piece of wood that'll 
bridge across here and up to here. I'm going to throw some cool little radiuses on it. Again, so it looks like it was always meant to be there. It's going to hurt me a little bit because it, it will sit exterior. I thought about just standing it up on here, but that really won't be strong enough. I'm going to overlap it. Uh, I'm not going to like it a whole lot, but it'll be cool. It'll work. It'll be strong. Okay, let's keep going. So close. Look at that, would you? It's not as pretty as I'd like up here. I might lay that over some more. Remember that part where I said it needed to be wider here for this to fit in? Yeah, I forgot that part. So we'll, <laughs> we'll add that in here. That's kind of the way that would look. Let's see if it works. Okay, theoretically, this slides in easily, and it does. And it goes up into place, and it does. Now you say it's crooked, I realize that. I'm gonna add a, another piece of 1 8 right there so that the servo will stand out parallel. You know, I had an old Dremel since I was a kid, and it was awesome. I finally dropped it and bent the, the uh, front of it. Thought, well, I deserve a new one, right? I got this new one. This turns out this is the switch. I got to turn it on with a hammer so often you wouldn't believe it. Oh, I took it apart and fiddled with the switch. It's really cheap stuff in there. Bums me out. I sound like an old guy. They just don't make things like they used to. It's true. Dude, it's true. Hitting it with different stuff till I figure out what works good. I could probably go at it with some gnarly sandpaper, you know, but I don't want to go real far beyond the, where I'm going to be gluing. Everywhere, anytime you're modifying a finished boat, Man, if you nick the wood anywhere, and you nick down through your surface finish, as soon as it gets wet, boy, water will wick into it like a sponge. There you go. That's how that's going to look. Remember I told you we're going to have a little raised section right here. Servo will bolt here and here. And uh, I think I'll be pretty stout. Okay, here we are back on track to do a little bit more work. As you can see, all is right in the world because Jackson is in his bed. He's had a rough, oh, two weeks, week and a half. He hurt his leg, his left leg rear leg and so he's peg legging around on three lately and um been waiting for it to improve it, this is kind of an ongoing thing but we're gonna take him to the vet tomorrow we're gonna you know, get a good look at it and see if we can figure out what's going on in there here's what's happening on the boat uh, last night i taped over the rear here i use hockey tape you ever used hockey tape pretty handy stuff I'm not going to tell you where to get this because I keep saying Rattlesnake RC over and over and you guys are probably getting tired of it. Bill carries this. You can get it probably anywhere. Um, it's kind of a, it, I guess it's meant for wrapping hockey sticks, you know. That's why they call it hockey tape. Uh, provides good grip, I suppose, or whatever. I don't know, but for toy boats, it's kind of stretchy. A little bit of like electrical tape, only it leaves no residue, uh, even on epoxy. And what we have here, I taped it over with the hockey tape. 
I left one edge that I'd fold over on the tape and that helps makes it easier to get a hold of it. Uh, and then stood the boat up on end and filled the old exhaust outlet with epoxy. And now we should be ready to rock and roll. Used West systems here. I put in a ton of micro light filler so it'd be really light uh, and added a little bit of brown to it too. I didn't go quite far enough. Uh, when I color it right, I can get pretty close to the color of the wood. For example, the fillets that you see in here, these have all been colored. I should show you how that's done. It's a filler. Uh, buried behind. This is my mess here. So I know you guys have always thought that I have this awesome, clean, wonderful shop. It's not true. Uh, this stuff right here, 410. It's a very, very light filler, obviously. That's why I call it micro light. But it's slightly uh, brown in color. So it'll give you a little bit of a wood color. So it's real handy for making pretty little fillets that aren't so visible. Uh, like I said, I meant to go darker here, but it didn't turn out. Um, we also glued this piece on. We did the same thing. We got hockey tape stretched around it. Let me switch hands here, see if I can remove it. It's difficult to do this while you're looking in the screen of your phone. It's kind of trippy. It adds a little something to the effort. You can see the stuff comes off real nice, but yet it, boy, it stays really, really well. I think there's one more piece. Yep. See, fold over the end and it gives you a tab and grab. Hold on. There you go. It's a little bit lighter in color, uh, but only because I haven't sealed the exterior of it yet. So we're going to do that now as we do some more work. And then uh, this piece is going to, looks like it belongs and has always been here. Okay, pretty handy on this boat, the full-size boat, the real hydroplane. They, this was all just bare wood, well, coated, but, you know, wood colored, not here, obviously, uh, and the whole bottom. So uh, you save a ton in, uh, in money, in paint, as well as in weight, because otherwise you're filling it and all that stuff, and then paint, priming, and then painting, and uh, it looks great. Uh, I'll show you the bottom sometime. Maybe you've seen it before. Okay, so what we're doing next, uh, I've already taped underneath here. Remember, this is our pipe mount. I just laid a piece of tape underneath it. I actually drilled this out slightly, so I have rough wood edges that'll allow the epoxy to seal on it really, really well, okay, and it'll stay put. Uh, we're gonna put in, this is just temporary, because I was toying with how I was gonna hold my uh, uh, second water line in place. Made the hole slightly oversized so I get it positioned right where I want it, but as it turns out, if it's pulled rearward slightly, that gives me this See, how cool is that? That's gonna look awesome. And then over here are now your, is that focusing? There's your dual outlets now. Eh, it's hard to see, but they're sausage cut. This one, I'm gonna throw a clamp on the exterior and pull on it just slightly, and that'll just pull it up nice and flush with the hull. Uh, it'll look super cool. And we're gonna glue this piece in right now. And we're gonna do some sealing in here. I did a lot of sanding. You'll recall we did a lot of carving inside there to open that up. And so all that's bare wood. We're going to take care of all that. We took a bunch of wood out over here to clear the water lines. Remember our uh, ESC is going to mount right here and there's water lines going in and out as well as wires, of course. And so uh, I didn't want, uh, you know, I just, I didn't want any immediate tension on the hoses as they, as they come off of the fittings because that can cause them to split and too risky so i gotta clean this up a little bit what i'll do is i'll take a paper towel with a little bit of alcohol on it and wipe this all down then we're going to do some sealing up here i'm going to do a tiny bit of filling right here and we'll reseal all of this area and of course this here where we cut away our old servo mount it used to be right here so we've done a lot of stuff uh, you'll recall I'm going, i wanted to run the antenna out where it was before it's going to be nicer if i move it over for a couple of reasons um, but there's a tapered hole here now, and the hole here in the antenna tube just kind of slides right in there really nice. I'm not going to glue those right now, but I am going to fill the old hole. You can see the tail end of my tape here. I've run a piece of tape up inside. And for this, I'll put a dab of the yellow paint in the epoxy and then fill that hole, and it'll kind of hide it. Okay, I, you'll still see it, but you know we're making an effort. Okay, so that's the things we're going to do right now. We just have lots of sealing to do. We're going to mix up some epoxy 
and just be slapping it all over the place on the boat. And then uh, the very last step, I think, is going to be I need to mount this uh, exterior, the extra, the extra chunk on there. I think I've explained why already. Can't do it right now, and you'll see why as I do this. And then, I think we'll really put this thing together and make waves, make silent waves. It's going to be awesome. It's like a silent burnout in the Tesla, right? Okay, so I'm going to try to prop this up on my tripod here. And you guys can watch a bunch of boring uh, uh, epoxy work. Okay? All right. There we are. Oh, he's almost asleep. Perfect. Time to go to work. We're going to have to work up underneath some of these edges. So you can just take one of these brushes. It uglies it up a little bit, but we're just going to work our way up the brush. And there, now we have our brush that we can get up underneath. Gonna make sure we don't have a lot of loose hairs. Really love these brushes. I think I've told you that before. Don't you love how wood looks as it starts to take epoxy? It darkens up real pretty like. Okay, we got a pretty good coat on there. Everywhere it's shiny. Uh, you might not be able to tell. I'm looking at it at an angle so that I see light reflecting off of it. Anything that's dull, anything that's not shiny means I haven't got epoxy on it yet, or not enough. All right, we're going to do a bunch of slap down in here. Going a little bit heavier in here on the lower portions where I know that it'll wind up with a lot of standing water on it from time to time. Why do I care that it looks good underneath there? Let me give you a real good reason for that. Never mind. I don't have a good reason. <laughs> uh, I was going to try to make something up that sounded profound, but... It's just kind of silly. I just, I like, I just think things that look right, work right. How about that? All right, now we're going to go to work back here, and I really do need more epoxy for that. I did wet this out with our thinner epoxy. Remember wetting out? I wanted the epoxy to dig deep into the wood, and now I'll put the thickened epoxy on top of it, and the two will work together. I've got my deep teeth sunk into the wood, and now we'll put some thick stuff here to make a really good bond to our new structural piece. I used the same thinned epoxy to coat the back of this piece that's going to be right here. So that's already done. Okay, I think we're about set. We got our epoxy mixed up here. Just a very small quantity. Thought we'd show you this super fun process here, right? Remember that brown filler? It kind of sits in here in, in chunks. Grab a little bit of that. If you can see that, I hope. We're going to drop that in just to give it a little bit of color. And this is the collodial silica I was telling you about. Collodial, collodial. Some of you are screaming at the screen, and that's fine. Send me a comment and try to describe how to pronounce it. That's probably not enough, but we're going to start with that. Now, some of you have also uh, noticed, and this is what I appreciate about you guys, is you're very observant and you keep me honest. And I appreciate your comments, by the way, so do give me comments. Uh, I've gotten a lot of great ideas from a lot of you, and I want to hear them. also want to hear what kind of things you want to know and what you want to see. But some of you have probably already typed in a comment asking why you see a dimpled look here now. I showed you earlier, at least I think I'm going to include it in the video, where I was scuffing this area. And now you wonder why there are dimples. Well, I wasn't happy with just scuffing the surface of the sealed wood. I wanted to get down to raw wood, but I didn't want to cut the whole area out. So I did take that favorite little burr of mine 
and I dimpled it. So I now have raw wood there that my epoxy is going to bite onto. Does that make sense? And if it doesn't, it did to me. We're shooting for the peanut butter look here. And I don't mean that in terms of the color, although that, I like peanut butter. Uh, I'm looking for that in terms of consistency. Because the epoxy we're mixing now, when I put it in place and assemble our part, I want it to stay there. I don't want it to be running out. And that's why we thicken it. Or if we're filling a, a big hole or a gap or something and we don't want people to know that we screwed up. But in this case, and right now, my peanut butter is dripping off of my mixing stick. It is not thick enough. Okay, there you go, all set. I'm gonna move this now. I just knew I was gonna knock it off of there, so I'm really proud of myself. Apply our epoxy here first. I'm gonna go pretty heavy up underneath here. Apologize if I get my head in the way. Too much room. Whoa! Come on now. You got slippery. I want that servo to not be snug, but not be loose. Okay, right there's my spot. Let's hope it stays. Tell you what, let's insure it. That's why I didn't coat this side yet. So it just barely needs to be snug. You know what happens if you go too tight, you push all the epoxy out of your joint. You gotta have epoxy in your joints. I wanna work on that floor there, right across here. A little difficult to do, but looks like I've got room to do it. And as I do that, hopefully you'll see those little divots disappear because they are concealed by my nice brown epoxy. <laughs> um, uh, you know, just as nitro is music to my ears, I guess on electric boat, the rubber bands used during construction will have to be music to my ears. I'm trying, you guys. It's a new world, I get that. That's why we're doing the electric project. All right, we're all set. We're gonna walk away. Me and Jackson are gonna go for a walk, or he's gonna go for a roll. Believe it or not, I got him a stroller now because his legs get hurt so much, but that's my commitment to Jackson Brown. Okay, we are back yet again. We have installed our little extension here, little raised area. Looks good. I just used a little five minute epoxy to slap that on there. And if we've been living right, we should have a very satisfying fit for our servo. Oh, there we go. All right. We've been living right. Here's the servo mounting screws I like to use. Why? Because they're aluminum. <laughs> right? Uh, they are... You know, they're an Allen head... And they're pretty decent, but boy, if you get if they're too tight and you try to remove them, you're gonna strip these. So I make a pretty good hole here, and we'll do that right now. I'll show you how I do that. Um, well, I mean, it's like anybody, you drill it with a drill, right? I went through my numbered bits and I found one that uh, looks pretty good. I don't need a whole heck of a lot of bite. I want to be able to thread it in relatively easily. Uh, certainly won't spin by hand, but I'll show you how it goes here in just a minute. You may or may not be able to see. You know, I just kind of go through and find one that looks about right to me. Uh, I did poke it through another piece of material and, and 
test fit it and I was happy with it because after we drill these, we're going to run the screws in, then we'll take them back out, and then we're going to come back and seal it all with some West systems, even down in the holes. And then we'll probably have to run the drill back in it again, or maybe a little bit smaller one at that point. And we'll run like a sacrificial screw in each one and then chuck that one because we will have kind of weakened it and hogged that out a little bit. And that way it's sealed down inside so that no water can wick its way in and swell the wood and make it pinch on this thing. So even much later, this should thread out easily. Uh, if you've been, I don't remember if it's in this video or a different one, but when we disassembled the boat, that's the way I had done this originally when this servo was mounted up in the front. And I was a little nervous about it, but I got a hold of these guys and they spun right out. So that works out pretty well to do that. So here's how we're going to do it. Here's a neat little deal. If you don't have one of these, get one. Not the Dremel. I know you have one of these. Obviously, you've got a 90. If you don't, you need it. We're going to remove this part. And they have this nice little drill chuck that fits on here. And so we can do some handy angle drilling down in tight spots, right? Eventually. Live, live video, pal. Okay. That's all you got to do. Give it a little snug. Okay. Probably going to put my head in your way. I apologize. I try not to. So about right there. Okay. Now before we try to do those front ones, we're going to put the first two screws in to hold it. Handy little deal here. Just about everything I show you, I call it a handy little deal, huh? I got a lot of handy little deals. By the way, I know you guys will be concerned. And in advance, I appreciate all your well wishes for Jackson Brown. I took him to the vet this morning. And they just reaffirmed a thing that we kind of have known for a long time. He has an arthritis problem in his uh, feet. Well, what, well, what would be you know, your heel. And so it's really hard for him to touch that foot down, his left foot, um, especially when it gets irritated. And all he has to do is just step wrong one time, you know. The postman pulls up out front and uh, he goes flying off of the couch, which he shouldn't do, and goes rip snorting through the doggy door around the back of the house. And then comes screaming around at the front and barks his brains out. And then he says, ouch. So he said there's a chance we could take him to an orthopedic surgeon. <laughs> Can you believe that? A, a doggy orthopedic surgeon. And uh, especially on his left heel, there's a particularly bad spot that they say will kind of behave like a bone spur where where it's got to just be acutely painful from time to time. And he might be able to go in there and clean that up, but you know how it is. I mean, he's an oldie, an oldie but a goodie, and you hate to put an old dog like that out. You know, put him under anesthesia. See how that goes in? Not, not too tough. And look at that. That is never going anywhere. Now we'll go through and seal all this. Okay, thought of another thing to show you. I've shown in some of my previous videos, if you haven't seen them, I've shown partially how I make these uh, steering shafts. And this is a thing on a lathe. This is another good reason to put your wife's car outside and buy tools. You can put a lathe in your shop. And it, it's not tough. I just fiddle around until I figured out how to do it. Make this little aluminum piece. Slide your, what is it, 440 rod through there? I don't know. And then I bend the end up like that. And now I'm going to glue this into the tube. And the reason I bend this end is because I don't trust it just to glue it. 
I know there's there's a company online, I'll have to find it again, um, that, that makes these, and it's just with a straight stud, and you glue it in, and you hope that's going to hold. And from what I've heard, uh, many reports that it works just fine. I'm nervous about it. So what I like to do, you may or may not be able to see it on this end. You probably can't tell, but right here, I have made a hole in the carbon, and that little titty there on the end pokes through that hole. And it's just that extra little bit of insurance for me, knowing that when this rod pulls, this is coming with it. <laughs> All right? Uh, so probably totally unnecessary, but what I've done is I fit this in the boat onto the servo, remounted that rudder assembly, and then I just attach this to the rudder and I look at it and figured out where I needed to cut it and I have cut it now to the proper length and then it's simply a matter of holding this piece on and judging exactly where the hole needs to be for this to poke through it just a tiny bit and I've already marked that and you can't see it probably because it's I used a sharpie so it's black on black but it's pretty obvious for me Next thing, how are you going to make a hole in here? You grab a drill bit and try it. You're going to splatter this all to heck. You can't do that. Uh, these, I've shown you these on some other things we've been doing. It's just kind of a rough little bit. It's not a stone. I believe they call it a diamond encrusted bit. It's about the right size. And it'll go through here reasonably well. I'm going to try to do this looking in the camera. This is probably a terrible mistake. I'm going to put it right on the center of my sharpie mark and then stand it up. Light pressure. Wiggle it just a tiny bit and she pokes right through. Okay, you probably can't tell but there's a hole there now. And hopefully I'm going to extend this out. Run it in. Pop it through the hole and then slide this part into place. And if I measured it right, this hits all the way to the end and it looks real groovy. And because I was thinking, I put this one in line with this hole that you probably can't see. But then when I install it in the boat, I'm going to make sure that I rotate it so that's down so that nobody but you and I know that that's in there. Okay, so that's how we do that. Now we just mix up some epoxy and put a bunch inside and put some into that hole. And if I can get this back apart, when I made this, you may be able to tell it has some light grooves in it. That's so that epoxy can remain in those grooves. If you make a really nice fit, this slides in and you have very little epoxy actually doing your bond. So no, I want some to be able to stay in those grooves. So that's why we do that. Slide it in, and boy, this will stay. I actually cut this one out of the long steering rod. The steering rod in the, the electro eliminator was too long now. And I didn't want to make another one, so I cut this one out. And man, it was a buzzard trying to get that out of there. So I know it works. It's the first time I've tried to cut one out. So all right, that's what we're going to do now. Just mix up some epoxy and put that in. thought you might like to see that step. Okay? Enjoy. <laughs> 